I've got a Medusa head, which I was lucky to find. And you can charge that up and boom! Kill a whole bunch of them. Perfect for the Blood Moon. Or similar circumstances. Can you feel the power? Hello, good day everyone. So today I am going to give you an introduction to magic in Terraria. Um, and I really probably just should have done this sooner to be honest. I'm, uh, I'm learning about the game to some degree as I go here. Um, and so I figured out some things playing my other little game that, that I'm going to show you now in this game. Um, remember my last episode fighting the brain of Cthulhu or Cthulhu? Um, I was wearing the jungle armor. So here I am in the jungle in case you were wondering why I'm here. Um, I'm still wearing my meteorite armor and my and playing with my space gun, but actually what I'm going to show you, you can do much earlier in the game and it's going to be very effective to help you uh, get a, a quicker start in the game if you're not you know, so far already or, or if you're starting a new game. So first thing you need to know, this glowing thing to my left here, that's a jungle spore. Um, and it contains actually more than one, it's usually two or three of them. Um, you're also going to need some other materials. This is the man-eater. If you kill those, you'll get vines um, and a hornet. Both hornets and the spiked jungle slimes, um, those will give you the stingers that you need. Um, so here's, see, you can see there's some more uh, jungle spores up here and up here. Um, basically, you just need to hang around the jungle for a bit. It's not even going to take that long. And uh, you'll get all the materials that you need. Um, specifically for your jungle armor, uh, 32 jungle spores, 12 stingers, and two vines. But let's not skip too far ahead. Um, it just so happens that there's actually a blood moon at the moment, so um, I wasn't really planning on this, but I'm going to show you uh, what some of these magic items can do before I show you how to actually make them and get them. Um, but again, you can actually get a lot of what I'm going to show you pretty early in the game. So. Uh, besides the space gun, which I already kind of showed you, and it's really fun and really cool, um, you can also get, there's the Vile Thorn. Um, this I got from the Corruption. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, but you can see, you know, very effective. Um, and I'll explain more about that. Um, there's this Sparking Stick. This is one of the first things you might find, uh, the, the Wand of Sparking. Uh, notice it lights them on fire. It's not that effective. <laughs> that's, that's a really early one. But, uh, for instance, this Vile Thorn again, against multiple enemies, um, very effective. Um, also, I've got a Medusa head, which I was lucky to find. And you can charge that up and boom, kill a whole bunch of them. Perfect for the Blood Moon, or similar circumstances if you have a whole mob around you. Boom! <laughs> It'll basically kill all of them as long as they're weak enough enemies. And you can even use it against uh, some more advanced stuff. Um... And besides that, we've also got a whole bunch of diamond, or a bunch of staffs, actually. There are a whole bunch of different staffs, and it depends what's available in your world in terms of what you can make. Um, but you can see, Blood Moon, just firing, firing, killing everybody, no problem. All right. I do particularly like the Medusa head when there are a bunch of these guys around. Come on, crowd up, crowd up, crowd up, crowd up. Come on, guys. Is that all you got? All right. Well, <laughs> all right. Um, moving right along, I'm just going to get inside and I'll, uh, I'll explain a little bit about how you can get a lot of these things. Actually, it is a blood moon. These guys might start banging down the door. Um, okay, so early in the game. Uh, you can get your jungle armor. Um, actually, you can start even earlier than that. You can um, make magic robes uh, very early in the game, like around the time, uh, not quite around the time, but, but early in the game, all, all you really need is, you know, some uh, iron or lead, some uh, cobwebs, um, and a whole bunch of wood uh, to get everything that you need to make some magic robes, which are going to give you about as much armor as you know your your wood armors your your basic ones and maybe your copper um it's going to give you a similar amount of defense but it's going to give you a bunch of special magic skills so um what you can do first of all and i've got one of these right here diamond robe you can see right there um these magic robes are basically a robe plus some uh some of the precious gems that you can find around the best one is the diamond robe the diamonds are the highest tier gem um 
that applies to these staffs as well. Um, these are a combination of gems plus certain ores. Depends what's available in your world in terms of ores or what you can get your hands on one way or another. Um, but yeah, the best of the the early robes is the diamond robe. Depends what gems you've got on on hand. Um, what you're going to need is ultimately 20 silk, which is in turn made out of 140 cobwebs. Um, you're going to make a, a regular robe with that. And then you're going to go um, and add uh, 10 gems to that to make a magic robe. Um, so that's all going to happen at your loom. I've got a loom down here at the bottom. Um, so first you turn, you, you do turn your cobwebs into uh, silk at the loom. It's seven cobwebs for one silk. Um, yeah, see this Medusa head's not effective if, if there are walls around. Uh, the vile thorn, on the other hand, goes right through the wall. Um, anyway, so what I was getting at. Uh, first of all, you're going to need to have your loom, and I did explain this earlier, but let me explain it again. Uh, in case you're just watching this one. Um, you'll make your loom at the sawmill from 12 wood. Uh, sawmill is the one over here with the spinning blade. Um, so in turn you'll make your sawmill at your workbench from either two iron or lead bars plus uh, one wood and one chain. In turn you'll make your chain at the anvil back that I've got one back over here um, and that's out of one iron or lead bar. That'll give you 10 chains. You just need one to make your sawmill. Um, so, first, make your anvil, uh, get your iron or lead bar, make some chains, ten of those, you only need one. Um, then, you go across uh, to your workbench, which is right here behind the R Ryan the Guide. Um, get your uh, two iron or lead bars, one wood, one of your chains, make your sawmill, that's over here. Go to your sawmill, get with twelve wood, uh, make your loom. I got one down here, um, and then you can do all this stuff, and of course you'll have to collect some, some cobwebs. Um, that's for your magic ropes, so uh, 140 cobwebs, 20 silk, becomes 20 silk, uh, make your robe, uh, add 10 gems, you get your, your thing here. And as you can see, increases maximum mana by 80, uh, 3 defense, reduces mana usage by 15. Now, one thing you need to understand, I probably should explain this right away, is mana, of course. So You've got your life hearts up in the right corner here. Uh, maximum of 400 regular health uh, pre-hard mode um, from getting the life crystals. Uh, then you've got your mana. So to increase your mana, you'll need mana crystals. Uh, mana crystals are crafted from fallen stars. So you'll need three fallen stars to make one of these mana crystals. And you can do that anywhere, actually. Um, so as long as you have three fallen stars, you just click that, make one of those, and you use it. You just click, left click. Um, I don't actually can't actually use that because my mana is already full. 200 uh, is the maximum you can get. Again, um, that's your your base. But uh, there are modifiers like this diamond robe will increase that by 80. So if I just throw that on, boom, you notice I've got more mana stars over here, which means I've got more um, ammo essentially for um, your magic, various magic, mostly weapons, but uh, particularly, uh, yeah. So you can kill more stuff faster. <laughs> um, and of course that's going to come into play in boss fights and all that kind of stuff as well. Now, um, but that that's what you can do earliest on, and you'll find, like, as I was saying, like the, your wand of sparking you might find laying around pretty early in the game. I found mine quite early. Um, you can also make these staffs, and how that works is that you'll need to go to your anvil again, but you'll need uh, a combination of ore plus gems. So for each of these, it's a different combination. It depends on what you have available, um, particularly usually your world will only have one of two from um, you know a set of ores. Like either you'll have, um, for instance, copper or tin. You won't usually have both. Um, so depending on that, that will decide which uh, staffs you can make. So me, I was able to make all of them because I used the extractinator. Again, I covered that in an earlier episode. So because of the extractinator, I had actually all of the ores, uh, at least all of the pre-hard mode ores. 
um, and all of the gems, and I had enough of all of those to craft all of these. Actually, to be honest, I recorded this episode already, but I forgot to turn on my voice recording, so that's a little embarrassing, but that's why I already have all of these. I was going to show you actually the going through crafting each one, um, including the jungle armor as well. You can see I've crafted that already. I was going to show you all of this, but it, you don't really need to watch me do that. So um, this amethyst staff um, is just uh, 10 copper bars and 8 amethyst gems. Uh, the base is 14 damage, and of course these are, these have modifiers, so some of them will get a little boost on that. Um, the, the, that's the weakest of the magic staffs that you can make. Um, the next one up, one, one step higher, is the topaz staff. Again, uh, this for this, and if you have tin instead of copper, it's um, 10 tin bars and 8 topaz. Um, and it just goes up from there. The, the base damage for that is 15. This one happens to be 18 because it's a murderous topaz staff, so it's got some, some bonuses there. Um, and you'll just get some of these bonuses when, when uh, you initially craft them. There is actually a thing where you can modify that, but I'll, I'll talk about that in another episode. Um, and stepping up from that, you've got the sapphire staff, which is, uh, of course, uh, eight sapphire gems, but that combines with silver. It has to be silver to make the sapphire one. 10 silver bars. Um, then you've got your emerald, which is um, 10 tungsten bars and 8 gems, uh, the 8 emerald gems. And then you've got your ruby, which is if you've got gold in your world, it's 10 gold bars and 8 rubies. Of course, the, all the gems, you'll have to find them underground, and, and all of those will be available normally, as far as I know. Um, but regardless, you can use your extractinator if you find one of these underground. Um, and I found plenty in this particular world, although I hadn't found any in my other world, so um, maybe that varies. Um, but again, I had all of this stuff, so I was able to do all of these for you. Um, and the highest tier of all is the Diamond Staff, which I showed you when I was fighting the uh, Brain of Cthulhu. But this is how I was able to make it. Um, it's 10 Platinum Bars and uh, 8 Diamonds. So that's the highest tier um, magical staff this early in the game. Of course, this is pre-hard mode. This is the introduction stuff. Um, so, again, the earliest uh, thing you can make is the diamond rope, but um, shortly thereafter, actually, you can make your, your jungle armor. Um, and I should mention, I'm, I'm wearing the meteor armor. Normally, you wouldn't have this as early as this other stuff I'm talking about, but it is considered a magical... Uh, like a magic armor. You'll notice if you mouse over here, um, set bonus, space gun costs zero mana, so that's my pew 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 space gun, which is very cool. Um, but this is this is going to be a little later when you get meteors and when you're strong enough to farm them. Um, I, again, you can watch my other episode for how I managed to do that probably a little earlier in that case than I should have, but long before you can get the, the meteor armor. And uh, the other thing is that each... Um, part of the meteor armor gives you a 7% increased magic damage. So it's a it's a general magic set in that sense that your magic weapons are, are going to be higher powered. Um, actually, that might even be why these are so high damage. So what you can make a lot earlier than the meteor armor, though, is the jungle armor. And um, that gives you actually a really solid, actually a series of boosts for your, your magic abilities. You, now, you'll notice first thing, my mana increase. So set bonus. Um, actually, each each item gives you an increase to your mana. So even if you only have like the hat or the shirt or whatever, um, each one gives you a little extra uh, in your mana reserves, um, which again is sort of like your ammo. But um, you know, there's a limit to how fast you can fire. You can see now I'm using the space gun. It's actually using mana because I'm not wearing the meteor armor. Um, and same, like your normal magic weapons will always use some of your mana, but um, you won't want to deplete it all the way because that'll actually stop it from regenerating for a while, but normally, as long as you don't use too much too fast, it'll regenerate um, pretty quickly. So normally I would have 200, but because I have the full set of jungle armor, I have 280 mana, um, but this also has other bo bonuses here. 4% um, 
4%, 4%. Each one gives you 4% increased magic critical strike chance. That's cumulative, so altogether that's 12% when you have the full set. Um, and the other set bonus, when you have all three only, you get 16% reduced mana usage, which, again, helps it replenish faster as well. So um, this jungle armor is actually something you can, you can craft pretty early in the game because all you really need to do is go to the jungle and as I was showing you, you need to find those jungle spores, uh, stingers, and uh, some vines and, and you don't really need that much. Um, you just need to hang around the jungle, kill some stuff, get those things. And my recommendation is that you do that probably right after you have your either silver or tungsten armor. That's personally, I mean, you could even try it earlier than that, but silver or tungsten should be strong enough um, that you can go down to the jungle and uh, and collect the items you need for the jungle armor, which is going to be a little stronger than those armors. Um, and particularly, if you have gold in your world instead of platinum, you're going to spend a lot of time hunting around enough gold or platinum to make an armor set out of those because those are rarer. Um, so, you know, I did that first in this game, but, um, and in fact, I, I had the meteorite armor first too, but it, it's a lot easier to go for the jungle armor because um, it's actually 15 defense in total, whereas the gold armor is only 16 defense. And the thing is, the jungle armor gives you all these bonuses for your magic, which, you know, this is pretty cool stuff and it's pretty powerful stuff. And it's more powerful when you have the full set of jungle armor. So, um, that combined, I think, is, is definitely much better than the gold armor. It's arguable with the platinum armor. Uh, platinum armor doesn't give you any bonuses other than defense. It does give you 20 defense, so um, it's a third more defense than the jungle armor, but it doesn't have all these magic bonuses. So uh, magic is actually uh, probably the, the earliest sort of class, um, I would say. I mean, well, default is melee. You're running around with a sword. That's that's sort of the default class. And this is um, when people are talking about classes in Terraria, this is actually what they're talking about. That as you get beyond your original basic ore armors, um, different sets of armor and even different armor items as, as you get further in the game into hard mode, um, you can specialize towards one of these different types, ways of fighting. Um, so melee is, you know, the obvious one, the default would run around with your sword, whack and everything. And um, if I go back here and I look at my um, shadow armor that I kind of showed you briefly um, after I beat the Eater of Worlds, the shadow armor, you'll notice, gives you a bonus to melee speed. And uh, so that's a melee set. Um, and it also actually, when you have the whole set, you'll move a little faster as well. But that that's considered a me that that's almost your first maybe um, melee armor set. Um, the molten armor, which I haven't gotten to yet, uh, is also a melee set. Um, those are ones that give you melee bonuses. But um, this, the jungle set, obviously, uh, it gives you lots of magic bonuses. So it's a magic set. Um, and the meteor is actually a magic set as well. As I said, uh, that increases your magic damage. So um, the further along you get, the more you're specialized towards one or way or another of fighting. Um, and there are more too. Another one here is the. this actually only exists pre-hard mode. Uh, the ninja set will give you bonuses to throwing. So uh, each one of these um, pieces of the ninja set gives you bonuses for throwing and that's for like your shurikens and throwing knives and stuff um, that doesn't exist as a specialization later in the game it's kind of a one-time thing in, in pre-hard mode but um, the other things that will come along are a ranged uh, class essentially and a summoner class so ranged would be your uh, your archery and your guns and stuff um, you'll get bonuses to uh, your range damage when you're shooting those things as well as other aspects of that and then summoner is something that starts to develop a little later um, there's the B armor is the only one you can get pre hard mode uh, basically the summoners are, are the ones that work with minions so you know the B armor you call bees and stuff <laughs> and they do, do some of the fighting for you uh, that'll become more important later in the game but um, this is basically what you need to do early on um, magic is is arguably one of the stronger things you can do more quickly. Um, you can build one of these staffs, um, get your jungle armor. That's that's the easiest one to do early on, I would say, uh, in my experience anyway. Um, 
So again, to do the full jungle armor, it's 32 jungle spores, 12 stingers, uh, which are all for the shirt, for making the jungle shirt. The, it's spores only for the hat, it's eight uh, spores. Um, and then the pants, you'll need two vines along with more spores. Uh, it's 32 in total. Um, so, yeah, and uh, let's see, I've, I've covered uh, a lot of that stuff now. Um, oh, and I meant to mention also, uh, while we're talking about the, the different crafting stations, at the sawmill you can also make your bed. Um, actually, I wanted to show you something else here too, which is the piggy bank. You can purchase a piggy bank for um, five gold from the merchant. Um, in my case, my merchant is named Edwin. He sold me this piggy bank. The piggy bank uh, you can set down on any flat surface. Um, well, actually not any flat surface. It has to be either a table or like a workbench or uh, it will sit on platforms as well. So I've sat mine here and peekaboo, you can hide more stuff in there. Um, and the thing is, not only can you hide more stuff in here, but um, like for instance, you can put your money in here. And you know how when you die, you lose money and it's really annoying? You just put it in your piggy bank and it's good. <laughs> and then you don't lose it when you die. Um, and you're thinking, well, you know, what good is that? Somebody's going to steal my money. Well, no, actually, I can put, you know, all this junk in here and then I can uh, actually pick up my piggy bank and I can take it with me. And the piggy bank stuff actually is saved with your player. Uh, rather than with the world. So anywhere you access your piggy bank, you're the only one who has access to it, um, which is a cool feature actually. And later on in the game, you get safes as well. Um, so you can actually set piggy banks everywhere. And again, like I've got a bunch of stuff in there. Um, you can just walk around with one and place it when you need to access the stuff that's in it. Um, or you can like have a bunch of them and place them all over the world. It's up to you. When Whenever you open a piggy bank, you'll get the same stuff. It's always your piggy bank and nobody else has access to it. So um, now I've left my piggy bank over there. But if you're really lucky, you'll get this item, the money trough. And hey, look, I've got a flying piggy. So the money trough is actually just a portable access to your piggy bank that you don't have to bother to set it down or create a surface to set it down on. And look, it's the same stuff that I've got in here now. So um, that's really useful, obviously. And uh, later on, you can also create a safe. And both of those are just, those are different. The, the piggy bank versus the safe are two additional sets of inventory that you can access uh, kind of wherever. Um, and they're specific only to you, and they travel with you and with your character rather than with the world. So even if you go like to a different world with your character, if you start up another level but you use the same character, you'll still have um, that stuff that's in your piggy bank and or your safe uh, with you. So that's very useful. <laughs> And one of those things that I put in my piggy bank is actually a bed. Again, you can create this at your sawmill. Um, the bed is made from 15 wood and 5 silk. Again, the silk is made from cobwebs, so 5 silk is 35 cobwebs. Turn into silk, combine with 15 wood, go to your sawmill, make a bed. And that's uh, what you use to set your spawn point. So uh, I haven't actually set this down anywhere, but I can take this bed somewhere and uh, like if I want to spawn in the dungeon entrance instead of like by default, I just spawn over here right by my sawmill actually. And um, if I want to spawn somewhere else, if I have a nice house underground and I'm building stuff down there, I can just take a bed down there and, I, and you just put it down. And I think you have to right click on it to set it as your spawn point. Um, and then the next time you spawn, next time you die, next time you enter the game, whatever, you'll, you'll show up there instead of, uh, you know, just out in the open. <laughs> or you know your your default spot uh, from the beginning so that's very useful as well um and i guess yeah I, I covered all the staffs already um but you can also find different uh, magic items and i kind of showed you these briefly uh it is nighttime coming here as well um so yeah the vile thorn um, you'll find various magic items occasionally elsewhere as well. You can always tell because it uses however many mana, so that means it's a magic item. Um, 
and different ones have different properties. The Vile Thorn, you know, it doesn't look very good because it's only 10 magic damage, but as I showed you against, you know, the hordes of zombies, um, it actually has up to seven hits per uh, fire, I guess. <laughs> Every time you fire it, it can, it can hit up to seven times, and it can hit multiple people with each of those, so or multiple enemies. Um, so, for instance, this guy here... Oh, Let's get him somewhere where I can hit him properly. See? I actually only hit the button once at, for that last one, and it hit him seven times, and he's dead. And it, even if you had a whole line of zombies, it's going to hit all of them. Um, another one, of course, is the Medusa. Um, the Vile Thorn actually goes through walls, so if there's somebody down here, I can hit him with that. Which is another really useful thing of the Vile Thorn. Um, the Medusa, on the other hand, you have to use in a sufficiently open space. Um, like I can, and you can charge it again up to three seconds. But if I go down in this cave, and somebody's like above that, see, it only got the zombie. It didn't get the eye, because the eye's outside the cave. Um, so there are certain properties to each one. There's a, a lot of other stuff you can find as well. Uh, there's books and rods. One of the other um, really cool things, if you're lucky, uh, early in the game, you can go to the dungeon entrance, and uh, there's you'll notice there's some books on shelves there. If you're really lucky, one of those books might, might, have uh, the Water Bolt, which is, it's a book, but it's a, it's a spell book, and you can use it as a weapon. Um, and the water bolt is actually one of the most, uh, one of the more powerful uh, early game magic items um, because it essentially fires a ball that bounces around and bounces around um, a few times, and it does quite a lot of damage. Um, it's supposed to be like a, a blue book with a yellow line on it. Um, I wasn't lucky enough; it was not in my dungeon entrance, and of course, I haven't gone down to the dungeon. Um, you will generally find apparently books on shelves in the dungeon. Um, but if you're really lucky, there are shells in the entrance to the dungeon, and you might even find it there. Um, you can actually mouse over the books, and um, it should give you a tooltip if it's there. Um, it'll, it'll, you know, if you put your mouse over top of it, your little pointer, um, it should come up with a little pop-up to tell you that it's the uh, the water bolt, and you can you can just take out your pickaxe, uh, knock it off the the shelf, and take it with you, and use it as a weapon. It's uh, one of your magic weapons. So. Um, oh, and here's my other uh, meteor, by the way. Uh, I don't really need that anymore, though. <laughs> oh, but I did. Remember how much trouble I was having with those guys? Yeah. And see, now I'm using stuff that I could actually have earlier in the game. And uh, this vile thorn was just from um, breaking one of those shadow orbs. Uh, but, you know, this, the, the staff, I could have got much earlier than that. So, um... You know, I can kind of wander the game, or wander the the nighttime here pretty freely. Fire this so you can see where I'm going, and to kill stuff. So you know, dual purpose as well. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just venturing towards the the dungeon just to show you what I mean as far as those bookshelves. Uh, beyond that, though, um, I think I've probably explained um, most of that stuff. Hopefully, well. I'm, I'm kind of rambling and, and looking at a little write-up that I made. But uh, anyway, I hope you like the introduction to magic. Um, and keep in mind that, that the class system does develop as the game progresses. Um, and a little sneak preview of uh, what I might have for you next as far as Terraria. There's actually um, kind of a spin-off. It's not exactly a sequel, but it's sort of a sequel slash spin-off. Um, to Terraria coming. It's called Terraria Otherworld, and it's it's going to get more into um, this kind of development, and I think I'm planning on covering that in my next video. Um, I'm just going to give you a little preview of it because it's, it's not out yet, but um, I'll tell you what I know so far. So this is what I'm talking about. At the dungeon entrance, you've got these little shelves with some books on them. I was not lucky enough to have the water bolt amongst these, but you might be, and you can just uh, take out your pickaxe and, like, take to the books and see, boom, book. Yeah, you got a book. Um, but if you're lucky, then it could be the Water Bolt, which is a spell, which is actually very powerful. And you can use it with your mana, maybe your jungle armor, which gives you all these um, magic bonuses. And uh, you'll be pretty set pretty early. 
And uh, so you could actually get a lot farther in the game than I did in this game. Um, just by following some of the stuff I've told you. So uh, anyway, hope you liked the video. And uh, again, I'll, I'll have lots more coming for you. I've got some uh, some cool ideas, actually, some, some things planned. So uh, if you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do. I've, I'm, uh, I'm very dedicated to this channel, and I've got plenty more coming. And, uh, you know, if you have subscribed, of course, thank you very much for watching. Um, either way, thank you for watching, and uh, thank you for subscribing if you have, or if you will. Um, and hope you liked the video, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye for now.